All right. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. There were some technical difficulties on this end, but we should be ready to, to go at this point. And welcome to the meeting. De nuevo, eh, siento mucho el retraso. Hemos tenido unas dificultades técnicas, pero ahora ya estamos listos y bienvenidos a la reunión. And Steve, do you want to um, share the PowerPoint? I will. Please. And um, of course, when I move into the, uh, when I move our interpreter into the translation room, I'm going to have to lower the um, the PowerPoint just for a second. But we'll go ahead and show that for now. All right. Just yeah. Just let me know when you want me to start. Go ahead. All right. So yeah, let's let's get started. Uh, and and again, I apologize for the technical get difficulties. I know it's been a few minutes, so um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so good evening and welcome to this community meeting to, to discuss the Fountain Grove phase of the Neighborhood Roads Disaster Recovery Project. My name is Greg Mariscal, Supervising Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa's Capital Projects Engineering, and I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Live interpretation of this meeting can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our translator, Azidra Menkos, will translate what I have just said. The rest of this meeting's translation will be only on the Spanish channel. Buenas noches y bienvenidos a esta reunión comunitaria para hablar de la fase de Fountain Grove del proyecto de recuperación de desastres de carreteras vecinales. Mi nombre, el del presentador que acaba de hablar, es Greg Mariscal, ingeniero supervisor de Ingeniería de Proyectos Capitales de la ciudad de Santa Rosa. Gracias por acompañarnos esta noche. Esta reunión va a tener interpretación simultánea en español. Puede unirse al canal en español haciendo clic en breves momentos en el icono de interpretación que parece un globo terráqueo. Lo va a encontrar en la barra de herramientas de Zoom en su pantalla. Si usted está en un teléfono móvil o en, un, uh, en una tableta, va a ver tres puntitos y al hacer clic allí encontrará el icono de interpretación. Puede hacer clic y elegir el idioma español. Uh, back to you. Thank you. And... Steve, are you are you gonna place her in the um, the Spanish channel? I'm doing so right now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, now our host Stephen Brown with the City of Santa Rosa will explain how the meeting will work. Okay. Thank you, Greg. And again, everyone, apologies for the technical glitch on this end. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's presenters will be viewed during the meeting. The City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project website, neighborhoodroadrecovery.com, a few days after the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Greg will open up the meeting for public questions and comments. Thank you, Steve. Tonight, after introducing our presenters, we will briefly review the purpose and scope of this project, the proposed timeline and phasing of work, what residents can expect during construction, how we'll handle the ongoing fire season and emergency access and evacuation routes. Lastly, we will conclude with your questions and comments. Next slide, please. Again, I'm Greg Mariscal, and you've already met Steve Brown, who is hosting tonight's meeting. From the City of Santa Rosa, Transportation and Public Works, Capital Products Engineering, we have the City's Project Manager, Felicia Ong, to provide an overview of the project. Construction manager, Matt Vale with Coastland Engineering will then provide details on the construction flow and address potential impacts this project may have on residents. Subject matter experts with us tonight serving as panelists for the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting include Mike Van Mitty, 
Transportation and Public Works Associate Traffic Engineer, and Neil Bregman, Santa Rosa Fire Department Emergency Preparedness Manager. I would like to remind you that, as the mailed invitation postcard pointed out, the focus of this meeting is on the work getting underway in the next few weeks in the Fountain Grove neighborhood. We held a similar meeting prior to the work in the Coffee Park neighborhood, which is, on the, which is the other area uh, of this project. Paving operations recently finished up in Coffee Park and Fountain Grove residents interested in seeing the end product are encouraged to drive through the Coffee Park area to see the newly completed roads, roads. Please note that some streets are still to receive the final slurry seal, which will happen early next year. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Felicia. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Greg. Uh, overall, the Coffee Park and Fountain Grove Neighborhood Roads Disaster Recovery Project is rehabilitating approximately 33 miles of roadway damage during debris removal following the 2017 Tubbs Fire. In addition, the project is upgrading about 300 pedestrian curb ramps to meet ADA compliance requirements. Funding for this $21.8 million project comes from multiple sources including the Community Development Block Grant, Disaster Recovery from the California Department of Housing and Urban Development, pg e Settlement Funds, Measure M Traffic Relief Funds, Utility Impact Fees, and Capital Improvement Funds. Next slide, please. The initial phase of road restoration in Fountain Grove started on May 20th and consisted of road digouts and repairs. Work on pedestrian curb ramp replacement and some curb and gutter replacement is currently taking place throughout the Fountain Grove area. The principal phase of roadway work in Fountain Grove is going to start by the middle of next month and is expected to be completed by November 2024, depending on weather or unforeseen factors. Slurry seal is expected to start in spring 2025 since it requires consistently dry weather days for the application process. All phases of the entire project are scheduled to be completed in summer 2025. Now I'll turn it over to our construction manager, Matt Vale with Coastland Engineering to talk about what to expect regarding the day-to-day -day construction activities. Great, thank you, Felicia. Um, as Felicia mentioned, the initial work uh, began in May with the dig out repairs, which is the removal and replacement of the worst uh, damaged sections of the roadway. Those areas of the dig outs will be uh, later covered with a slurry seal. So the end product is not yet in place. Um, we did also begin with the placement of the curb or replacement of curb ramps and curb and gutter in the in the Fountain Grove area also that be, work began in July. Um, we have done some of the, the grind out and overlay replacement in Fountain Grove, um, but the majority of that grind and overlay work will begin um, in the latter part of September. We're anticipating starting around the 23rd of September uh, on the dig outs and overlay. And then, as Felicia mentioned, the slurry seal and striping will be the final work. Um, that work being weather dependent, uh, we'll have to wait for the springtime when the temperatures and uh, precipitation allow that work to proceed. Next slide, please. So here's a map of the of Fountain Grove area. I'm pretty much everyone's familiar with this. Uh, this will be the kind of se sequence of work as we rotate around the neighborhoods, um, the first phase is phase fix six, which is down in the round barned area, um, followed by phase seven in the orange area. Then we'll move up into the Northwest area, uh, phase eight, followed by phase nine, which is along um, Parker Hill Road and, and so on. And then concluding with phase 10, along uh, Fountain Grove Parkway um, on the eastern edge of the project. This, this schedule is um, the plan that we have in place right now. It is subject to, to some change, but for the most part, this is the contractor's schedule as it's, as it's planned right now. Next slide, please. So the 
as we've mentioned before, the general construction activities are the curb ramp, curb and gutter replacement, and the grind and overlay. Um, as part of the grind and overlay, crews will be coming through and resetting the um, manhole covers and valve boxes. Those um, manhole covers and frames and boxes need to be lowered in order to grind the road surface. And so the first stage of that work is obviously to lower the valve boxes. And, and then when the new paving is in place, we'll raise everything back up so it's accessible from the surface. Um, as we mentioned, dig out repairs have been completed in the Fountain Grove area. And then the final stage is to slurry seal uh, the um, roads that have received dig out repairs and then followed up by striping all of the roadway surfaces. Next slide, please. So this, and I'm sure as you've been walking around or driving through your neighborhood, you've seen um, the curb ramp and curb and gutter replacement taking place. Um, you may be wondering why are we replacing um, curb and gutter and, and the ramps. And the intent is, is the, the current ramps or the pre-construction ramps do not meet the current ADA standards. And so the ramps that we're replacing um, now meet the, the current ADA compliance requirements. And it, specifically, it's the truncated, the yellow truncated dome section for the visually impaired um, that improves and, and updates the ramps. Next slide, please. Um, typical di dig outs around the neighborhoods, most of it, the neighborhoods now have been completed, but what's required for the dig out is to remove the most significantly damaged sections of the roadway surface by grinding them out. And then they are patched back in with and replaced the asphalt surface there. And then these streets will then subsequently be slurry sealed uh, in the springtime. Next slide. Yeah, one more. There we go. Uh, so a typical grind and overlay of the pavement. Um, this is probably going to be the most disruptive, disruptive, disruptive activity that will take place. Um, the photograph on the left is the grinding process. The equipment that you see behind the dump truck um, is a track mounted roller that has abrasive teeth and basically that that device rolls down the street and grinds out about a two to three inch section of the asphalt those uh, materials are then loaded into the truck that you see there by the conveyor belt and and i did want to mention that on this project all of the ground materials and all of the concrete that's demolished at the curb ramps is being recycled. So all of this material will be put back in use for a future project. Um, the materials will be recaptured and reused. The photograph on the right is the paving operation. And the um, device you see on the left is the hopper, which um, transports the, basically the, the asphalt material is, is placed in the hopper. It's placed then in the paving machine by that conveyor belt that you see. And then the paving machine lays down a level course of asphalt concrete. And then of course not pictured are the rolling uh, equipment that compacts the concrete. And the, the reason that this operation takes two lanes is because the weight of the vehicles. And so if we were to put the hopper in the same lane as the paving machine, there is a risk that the weight of that equipment could compress further the aggregate road base and, and would cause problems with the paving. So when this operation is going on, there will be two lanes of traffic taken up, but this equipment moves at a fairly rapid pace. So they will move through the neighborhoods uh, quite qu quickly and will not be blocking your homes for, for more than a few minutes. Next slide. And then the final steps here um, on the left, obviously, is the slurry seal operation. 
slurry seal is basically uh, asphalt and water emulsion with uh, fine particle aggregates in it. And the intent of the slurry seal is to extend the useful life, life of existing pavement. It goes down relatively quickly, although there are some limitations to putting vehicles. The material needs to cure and dry uh, before you can put traffic back on it. So that's why we're weather contingent upon uh, the placement of the slurry seal, because it needs to be put down within certain temperature ranges and ranges and obviously it can't be placed while it's raining um but this operation is completed in a day and the material will cure and you'll be able to drive onto the slurry seals um within a few hours of its being placed and then the final operation is photo photograph on the right which is the application of the new striping crosswalks uh stop legends and uh traffic striping Next slide, please. The project duration is, is scheduled for 370 working days. Uh, we began in February and we're approximately 250 days into the schedule. Um, we will be probably taking a winter su suspension due to the temperature and precipitation limitations on the work, but the 370 days puts us out in um, early August of 2025. And so that's our projected completion date. The typical hours of work are Monday through Friday. Uh, the work will begin at 7 a.m. and continue on until 5 p.m. However, and it's worth noting that the traffic lane closures will not be in place before 8 a.m. and we'll do our best to get them picked up and moved out of the roadway by 5 p.m. So the hour between 7 and 8 is generally taken up by the placement of the traffic controls, but be aware that you will have the ability to egress and ingress from your homes um, before 8 a.m. Uh, weekend and night work we're not an currently anticipating, but obviously uh, to maintain the schedule it is possible that the, we may have some weekend work um, because we're in a residential area, it is highly unlikely that we'll have any night work. Next slide. Um, I've put together a few slides here that talk about the um, potential impacts to the neighborhoods and how we plan to mitigate those impacts. Uh, the first, obviously, is emergency vehicle access at all times. The, the crews and the workers and the flaggers are, have all been instructed that if there is an emergency vehicle um, approaching the work area, work stops immediately, we clear out of the way, and we provide uninterrupted access to emergency vehicles at all times. So there will not be any delay if there's an emergency situation. There will be street closures. Um, the, there's really no way to mitigate that, but in order to allow you to schedule your activities, we have a number of public information outreach efforts, um, a weekly newsletter, a website. Our contractor will be placing door hangers. We have these uh, community meetings, and then obviously traffic signage um, message boards will be in place to inform you um, of upcoming street closures and activities. Another impact will be street parking. Uh, this is curbside parking. Um, again, we can't eliminate the need to take street parking, but our mitigation is to provide you with adequate notice 72 hours in advance so that you can plan accordingly, move park vehicles and avoid um, any kind of towing or removal of vehicles. Next slide. Access to your home. There will be some times when the paving operations or the slurry seal operation are ongoing and access to your home may be disrupted. You know, there we will always make attempts to allow you passage uh, in and out of your home, but there may be some 
delays up to 15 to 20 minutes at times. Um, the mitigation is obviously the, again, public outreach notifications, our, our traffic control and flagging. They're always available to try to help you um, with your scheduling needs. Deliveries, mail and trash. Uh, we have a regular communication program with the service providers for the mail and the trash pickup, et cetera. Um, so they are always aware of our, our activities. Um, there may be particular times when the, the, the wheelie bins, as I like to call them, have to be placed um, on off schedule, but we'll definitely be working with the service providers to make sure there's no disruption to your services. Uh, and then the last impact is obviously these activities create dust and gravel. Um, we will have truck traffic, both um, off hauling the materials that we grind out and then bringing in the new asphalt materials. I've got a slide that coming up with showing the truck routes that we plan to use. And our mitigation is obviously street sweeping on a regular basis. There will be um, a street sweeper on site every day uh, with sweeping activity at the end of each shift. Next slide. So the hall route and, and it, basically Fountain Grove Parkway will be, be the main hall route because it's our access to 101. The um, material coming in and out will, will utilize um, Fountain Grove Parkway and, you know, for the transportation of all the materials. Um, so that that there will be an increase of truck traffic um, during the grind and overlay um, activities on Fountain Grove. Next slide. One final impact, and we've done our best to notify homeowners and residents, but if there are tree branches that are in a risk of damage due to the equipment that you're using, the, the grinding equipment, as an example, is about 10 feet uh, in height above the ground. And so it is necessary for our contractor to come through and remove branches that overhang the road. And the reason being that there it is less harmful to the tree to trim a branch than it is for this equipment to tear it off the trunk. And so we will be coming through um, and removing selective branches. Um, and we'll try our best to notify you when those uh, tree trimming operations are going to be taking place. Next slide. One final uh, thought and offer in Coastland Engineering is very engaged with the public. Our inspectors, um, are on site every day during the construction activities. They are very receptive to um, meeting with the public and helping you work through um, your scheduling issues. If an unforeseen event comes up, you need to exit or access your home, please contact our inspector and we will make every effort to accommodate your schedules and your transportation needs. Um, but feel free to contact, approach our inspector. Um, you'll, you'll recognize their Coastland um, safety vest. And, and again, please feel free to contact them. We will do everything we can to accommodate your, your needs with regards to access. So with that, I think I'm gonna turn it back over to Greg. Thank you, Matt. A quick reminder regarding schedule. There are many factors that can impact the project schedule, including inclement weather and unanticipated conditions or circumstances that may be encountered during the work. The timeline we heard is currently our best estimate and we will continue to provide schedule updates through the project website and weekly emails. We will put up a screen shortly with how you can access those resources. Now we'd like to address your questions about the project. Before we begin, 
joining Felicia and me to answer your questions and hear your comments. We have Mike Van Mitty, Associate Traffic Engineer, Neil Bregman, Emergency Services, and Matt Vale, Construction Manager. I will now ask Steve to review how the public can participate by asking live questions and comments. All right, great. Thank you, Greg. Um, once we get underway with the question period, anyone wishing to ask a question or comment can raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by te telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. I will then call on the public one by one who have their ha Zoom hand raised and will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted. Uh, so our panelists can respond to your question. Uh, due to our technical difficulties on this end, uh, what I'm going to do is as I call on you, I'm going to change your uh, guest name to guest one, two, three, et cetera. And I will call on you in that order. Okay, thank you, Steve. Before we open up questions to meeting attendees, I'll read one that was submitted beforehand. Uh, so this one was, I see that Fountain Grove Parkway is not on the list of roads to be repaved during this repair effort and have previously told, been told the city is seeking grant money from a different source to pay for that work. Can you tell us the status of those grant requests and when the city expects to be able to begin reconditioning uh, of that roadway? Uh, Felicia, can you please answer this question? Sure thing. Uh, so the request, the grant requests have been completed for the Fountain Grove uh, roadway project, and we do anticipate construction to start sometime next year. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, now, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? We are. And I'm going to start with guest one. Guest one, your, your microphone has been... Uh, unmuted. You should be able to speak at this point. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and go ahead and ask your question. Yes, one. You should have uh, the ability to speak at this point. Okay, we will try uh, to come back to you then. And we'll move to guest two. Uh, guest two, your microphone should be uh, open now. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Francine. I had a question about um, dust, gravel, and kind of road... Um, paving materials, fumes, and I'm glad to hear that you'll be doing some sweeping. Will there be any air sampling like on windy days to give people um, a heads up not to like walk around the area if they have breathing problems or small children or pets? You know, we walk, a lot of people walk their pets a lot of times all around here um, in Fountain Grove. So is there any air sampling that would give us information on days not to be walking out there? Uh, thank you for your question, Francine. Uh, Matt, could you uh, help answer that question? Certainly. Um, I, there are no plans to do air sampling, um, but I would say if we are doing pave, the grinding and paving operations, the, those activities are very noisy. Um, I'm not sure that you would want to be walking in the vicinity of where we're performing that work. It's not so much um, the 
there is some dust associated with it, but the noise um, of those operations, particularly the grinding operations, you, you probably don't want to be walking um, on the streets while those activities are going on. And, and how would we know that that was the operation of the day, just by the noise? Um, well, we'll we'll have the streets the streets will be posted because. Um, those activities will require a closure of the street. So the, so the area of work will be posted both ends of the street. Um, we'll, we'll be handing out schedules, um, you know, door hangers, et cetera, with schedules that'll say when we're going to be on a particular street. And then again, those streets will be posted with road closure signs, probably no parking signs, et cetera. So you'll have advance notice of when those activities are taking place. Thank you. You're very good. And we're back to guest one. Guest one, I'm going to go ahead and open up your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and go ahead and ask your question. Okay, I guess one, I'm, I'm going to come back to you again. We'll go ahead and move on to guest three. Guest three, your microphone should be open now, and you should be able to speak. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, um, my name is Sharon Zimmerman, and um, my questions really surround how can we access our homes on the times when the roads are going to be closed, um, because many people will have to access and leave their home and come back to their home in between the hours of eight and five. Um, will there be opportunity to pre-position a car on a, an adjoining street um, that, that you could presumably walk to and have parked there and be able to exit the neighborhood? But then a follow-up question to that is if you were to do that, like on the street, I, we live on, I live on St. Andrews, the um, sidewalk is on the opposite side of the street. So if, I, if we were to walk on the sidewalk, we'd have to cross the street. And will we have the ability to walk on the fresh slurry to walk to a car? Um, and it's identifying ahead of time on the schedule what day the roads are going to be closed in front of a home so we can make contingency plans. Because it's just not reasonable to think that people are oh, no problem, leave before eight and come back after five. That just doesn't work with many people's work schedules, doctor appointment schedules, et cetera. Hey, thank you for your question, Sharon. Um, Matt, could you also take this one? Certainly. Um, so there's kind of two phases. The, the first phase of work, which we're going to be performing in September and in October, is the grind and overlay, which is the paving. Um, that operation is done at one on one side of the street at a time. Um, but we can accommodate vehicle traffic through the work zone. It's if if the paving equipment or the grinding equipment is directly in front of your home, there may be um some temporary delays. I'm gonna say up to you know 15, 20 minutes. Um while the while the equipment is directly in front of your driveway but for the most part the once the grinding operation is complete you can drive over um the the ground section of the street and onto the remaining paved section of the street and move in and out of the neighborhood so there's it is not entirely a moratorium on vehicle traffic but there is some coordination that needs to take place um, we will have flaggers present um, to help people get in and out. Um, obviously, we said in the in the event of an emergency, we'll stop what we're doing and and allow people access in and out of their driveways. Or if an emergency vehicle needs to respond, they'll have access to the areas. Um, the slurry seal, you have a good point. The slurry seal, you can't drive on it and you can't really walk on it. But we're only going to slurry seal one half of the street at a time. So we will slurry seal one half of the street, let it cure, and then we'll come back and do this the other half of the street on a on a separate date. So there will be 
the opportunity to drive on the non-slurry sealed side of the street um, during the hours of work. Again, it, you won't be able to drive across the slurry seal, but in in the um, coffee park area, we communicated with with um, the residents down there. There there were opportunities, and we were able to accommodate um, remote parking within you know reasonable distance of homes. I have a follow up question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So Matt, thank you for that. But so so then thinking about that slurry time phase of the project and worst case scenario, you've done the slurry on the side of the street directly in front of someone's home. And if you were to pre-position the house from the car, I'm sorry, a car remotely on an adjoining street, that's all well and good if you can walk to it. But for many of us in Fountain Grove, I'm thinking around, um, well, St. Andrews Drive, for example, um, which is the street I know the most closely because it's my street, but others are like this as well. There's only sidewalk on one side of the street. Mm -hmm. So you're walking down a side, you, you're walking on um, unfinished, um, um, you're not walking on a sidewalk, you're not walking on a street to get to where you remotely parked your car and it's unimproved. It's certainly not ADA compliant for somebody to do that. It's not like you could push a wheelchair or a walker down there. And so what's being done to accommodate people in that particular situation? It's not reasonable to say they can't access, leave their home for say a six or you know eight hour period during the day. Well, we could, we, the, the unfortunately there are some limitations with the materials um they do take a, a few hours to cure um in the event that you need to move across the slurry we can make accommodation I, we've put down craft paper and allowed people to walk so so obviously you can't track or you don't want to track in the the slurry seal we can make accommodations such as putting down a, a a piece of craft paper across the slurry seal so you can move in and out, um, and so we'll like I said we'll make our best accommodations, um, but there are some limitations with the the curing time yeah. of the materials. I would just ask you to look at you know Coffee Park had sidewalks on both sides of the street. It's a very different um, you know area as you know than Fountain Grove. Much of many areas of Fountain Grove do not have sidewalks on both sides of the street. And so you've got, we've got, you know, more senior citizens. Um, we will have, eight, there are ADA compliance issues to be concerned about in that case. So I just would ask that the, um, you really pay particular attention to those areas where there are not sidewalks on both sides of the street and people are going to have egress issues. And it's just not ADA compliant to have people walking on, on um, in, um, on unlevel surfaces along the, the the median. Many of them have scotch broom that haven't been cut back. You know, we have a lot of issues like that. Well, pedestrian access is a prior is a priority for us. So we will that's always top of mind. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, guest four. Uh, I've just unmuted your microphone, and at this point, you should be able to ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? I can. I have actually a couple of questions. Can I ask them all at the same time? Well, I'm sure you can. Okay. Um, my first question is, has any projected underground work that would require digging up the street been coordinated with the pavement? work that's going to be done? Uh, yes. So we have uh, coordinated with um, private projects that have uh, work to be done in our roads. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they can meet our schedule and other times they can't. Um, but we have given out our information of scheduling to those, to those uh, companies. Are they actively trying to get their work done before this paving project 
hits that area? I believe so. Okay. Um, and then earlier you said that the slurry seal is going to go over the grind and refill areas. Is it also going to hit areas that um, were cut into earlier? Uh, I, or are all the streets going to be ground and refilled? So there are some streets that are uh, what we call milled and filled, which is basically we grind out the top two to three inches of the entire street and we put in a, a new asphalt within those two to three inches. And then we have the other one, um, which is called dig outs, where we do patches. And that's where you're going to see where all those patches on the road mm -hmm. that those areas where we did the dig outs will have a slurry seal. And there are other streets that um, are on our project map that are just going to receive the slurry seal. So the mill and fill sections will not receive an additional layer, but there are streets that have dig outs that will receive the slurry and then streets that will just receive slurry. Thank you, that answers my questions. Okay. All right, uh, terrific. We will now move on to um, guest five. Guest five, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you so choose. Guest five. Are yes, you can, you, can you hear me? I can. Okay. I, I recently moved to the area, and when I walk around my neighborhood, I live right off of Found, uh, Found Grove Parkway. The roads, to me, compared to where I came from, seem in pretty good shape. Is this fire damage damaged the roadway in ways that a layperson like me wouldn't necessarily see. Hey, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so we did have our materials lab go out and evaluate each of the streets and that's how they determined the level of rehabilitation. Um, slurry seal, or just the slurry seal will be the least, um, what's the word, uh, for, for roads that are the least damaged, but that are still damaged. And so in those situations, it will be a little bit more difficult for a layperson to see the, the need for a slurry seal. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe I just have to see a spot that's badly damaged because so far I haven't seen one unless... I'm just missing something. Very good. Well, thank you very much. We'll go ahead and move on to uh, guest six. And guest six, your microphone should now be unmuted and you should be able to ask your question. Okay, yeah, we have a couple of questions. First of all, uh, we're in the bridge section. And based on the map that uh, you get with the scan, it shows that we're scheduled to dig out of the slurry. Uh, as I think the mass said earlier, that oh. some of the dig outs already been done. Is that correct? Uh, guess six, guess six your, your microphone seems to be breaking up. We're having trouble hearing you on this end. Perhaps if you could Hello? speak more, more directly to the microphone. All right. Yeah, sorry. Oh, better. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're in the blue section, and uh, I shows that we're, for, we're supposed to have a dig out and slur. Matt indicated earlier that the dig had already been done. How do you know if it had been done in our area? And if not, will we know how far in advance when it's going to happen? Hey, um, so I think your question, because uh, you started breaking up at the end a little bit again, is um, how will you know if the dig outs have been done and how far in advance will you be noticed if? It has not been completed. Is that correct? Guess six. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. 
Yeah. So you will be able to see if if the digouts have been done. Uh, you'll see patches in the road of dark asphalt. So those will be the new sections. And if you don't see them out now, we we should be giving at least, I think it's, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, uh, two to three week notice. Right. Yeah, if we're if we're going to be doing dig outs on the street, we will definitely be out there uh, providing a handout or, a, a, you know, the no parking signs, et cetera. So there will be advance notice. Yeah. Um, my understanding, though, is is the majority, if not all of the dig outs have been completed. OK, and the slurries will also be given a couple weeks notice. Yes. All right, thanks. Terrific, thank you very much. And um, we will go ahead and move on to guest seven. Guest seven, your um, your microphone should now be unmuted and you should be able to ask your question. Thank you, uh, thank you all for having this meeting and uh, being candid with us in this way. Um, are you planning to post some sort of a grid or schedule of when you're getting to the various phases so that we can follow along online or in some other fashion? Yes, um, we will be posting information on our project website, neighborhoodroadrecovery.com. Um, and then we will also be kind of showing it on our last slide at the end so that people can take down that address. Thanks, because I was just poking around at the site just now and didn't see anything that looked like that. Oh, okay, it, I don't think uh, it has been updated yet with the with the correct information, but we will do that soon. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> Terrific. We're now moving on to guest eight. Uh, guest eight, your microphone should now be unmuted and you should be able to ask your question. You can state your name for the record if you wish. Hi, my name is Ronnie and um, <clears throat> I've lived here in Fountain Grove off Alturia for quite a while, including uh, in 2017, 18, 19, of course, those wonderful years that caused this problem to begin with. And um, my question is, since as we move into the September, October time frame, um, the area we're in was the yellow one. So probably the second one that you'll be getting to, to do the grind out and the overlay. Um, if we're in a situation where they've called for red flag warnings or high fire danger or pg and is planning to do a PSPS in this area, Will you be ceasing work and opening roads for complete and total access until that warning and time frame is over? Um, you thank you. Start. Go ahead, Felicia. Oh, no, go ahead, Neil. Uh, no, 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 you, you start. I will follow up on your information. Please do. Oh, I, I was just going to direct that question <laughs> over to you. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, yeah. Neil no, driving okay. with the fire department. Thank you for your question. Uh, I, I appreciate your concern. The answer is yes. I am in communication with this team every day. And if we see a red flag warning and we do not to a particular street have the right access, I will tell them that they need to not do work that day, especially at night. We will be making sure that they are cleared out and everything is ready to go. Uh, on those days, I will be having daily calls with them to make sure everything is going the right way. And if we are not comfortable, we will have them completely cease work. Your safety is my top concern, and I'm paying attention to the weather the entire time this project is happening. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. And at at this point, uh, I see no uh, further hands raised. If you if you have a question and you would like to ask it, please raise your hand. Uh, we'll wait another uh, moment or so for folks that uh, might have a closing question. And I see no other hands raised. Thank you, Steve. Yep, seeing no further questions, uh, I would like to, ex or, okay, we do have one more question. Looks like. Okay, one moment. Hmm. 
All right, guest 10. I am now going to unmute your microphone. You can uh, state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question. Yes, our family lives off of Parker Hill Road. And the question is, will the entirety um, of the Parker Hill Road uh, be uh, paved? Uh, thank you for your question. I um, I will have to take a look at the map again. If you could send an email over to uh, neighborhood road info at neighborhood oh my gosh info at neighborhoodroadrecovery.com and then we can address your your question there. Thank you. Okay, it appears that we. We do have a, another question. Uh, this is from guest number 11. Guest 11, I've unmuted your microphone. Uh, you should be able to speak now if you'd like to state your name for the record and ask your question. Thank you. My name is Katie. And I was wondering about all of the homes in the area that are under construction. How do you anticipate having and working with subcontractors that need to be on the property? with their tools and possibly vehicles. Um, we will allow access to the homes and we can coordinate with contractors on a case-by-case -case situation. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll wait just one more moment if anybody has a last minute question before we close out the question and answer section of this meeting. All right. And at this point, I do not see any other hands raised. All right. I would like to express my appreciation and thanks to the members of the community for participating tonight. We appreciate, we appreciate your taking the time to listen, ask questions, and provide your input. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I want to remind everyone that the webpage for this project is neighborhoodroadrecovery.com, where you can find information on upcoming construction in progress and project background. On the website, you can also subscribe to receive construction updates, and you can send a request to subscribe or any other inquiry to info at neighborhoodroadrecovery.com. Our project information phone number is 707-385-1239. And I'd like to remind you about the city's special webpage dedicated to neighborhood travel routes during an emergency, srcity.org slash knowyourwaysout. We'll leave this screen up for a few minutes. Tonight's presentation slides will be posted on the web to the website by tomorrow morning, and a video of the meeting will be posted no later than Monday of next week. Thank you again, and good night.